coming up on Wild Rescues. And I said, my God, it was like a river in front of my trailer. In the face of a hurricane's anger, rescuers struggle to save those animals trapped by the rising floodwaters. Then... I know we can save children's lives and we can solve crimes. Buford has a natural talent for following a scent. It's a talent that makes him a lifesaver. And later, their mission is to save these victims of man's neglect. Find out how their crusade started. On this episode of Wild Rescues. Ken Nichols has run this simple dive shop on the north shore of Oahu since 1998. The unique sculpture in front of his shop is more than just a whimsical mound of beachcomber findings. It represents a cause that Ken and his staff are passionately devoted to. I am more comfortable in the marine environment than I ever am on land. It's the most peaceful, beautiful, awe-inspiring environment I've ever been in. The one price that we pay for being able to dive in such a beautiful environment is unfortunately getting to see the darker side of what's happening out there. Ken and his staff regularly encounter injured sea life. They report an alarming increase in the number of animals entangled in garbage dumped in the ocean. There is a massive amount of sea debris and, and waste that is washing up on Hawaiian shores. Fishing nets, abandoned fishing lines, hooks and other debris attach to the fragile coral reef, entangling marine life and causing slow and painful deaths. These nets, if they don't sink down to the bottom of the ocean floor in deep water, will wash up on uh, shallow waters and shallow reefs. They'll wrap up around coral heads, swells will uh, drag these nets into shallower water, pulling up coral heads as they go, and also killing marine life along the way. Within a few short months in 1998, Canada's team found eight green sea turtles in distress, all suffering from encounters with fishing line or nets. Green sea turtles are listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act, and they are protected here in Hawaii. But they are not protected from thoughtlessness. Ken decides it's time to do something about it. For me, it was very simple to get directly involved because it's simply a matter of conscience. If you were to see a child drowning and you had the ability to do something, well, you would. It all started when a friend of mine came in and told us of a turtle that he had found with fishing line that was in a really bad state. So what we did was we put a search party together and the very first day we went out, we found a turtle. Ken soon realizes that this turtle is only one of many in distress. The turtle had line wrapped around it. I tried to remove the line, was unable to do so in the water and eventually was able to catch up to him, pull him up to the surface, brought him onto the boat and remove the line, which was cutting down to his bone. Another turtle, one the crew calls Kainoa, is in very bad shape, with a hook in his neck and fishing line trailing behind him. But the attempt to rescue Kainoa puts diver Joe Guarino in the hospital. When we came across Kainoa, it looked very lethargic and it looked very injured. And as I came up to it, I realized that it had had a hook through its mouth and was unable to use one of its fins. So I grabbed the turtle and I rode it to the surface. When I got to the surface, she started struggling, so I just let it go. I wasn't about to resist, thinking that that could cause more damage to the turtle. It swam back down to the bottom and eventually was successful and able to bring it up to the surface. Look right through his mouth. I swam it back to the boat and I noticed a uh, severe pain right in the middle of my spine. The pain is from divers' bends. Joe has come back to the surface too quickly. Kainoa is picked up by National Marine Fisheries for further care. 
and Joe was sent to a hyperbolic chamber. Not long after Kainoa's rescue, Halote is spotted. He has fishing line wrapped tightly around his right fin. In the process of trying to find the original turtle, which we were looking for, we found Halote as well, which was another very disturbing incident because that turtle had literally a fin that was rotting off of his body with exposed bones. When we came across him, I literally had the Halote swim up into my hands. He didn't really resist at all and was very, very weak in comparison to many of the turtles we've recovered. Ken knows immediately that he can't help this turtle alone. They load him into the boat and drive him to the docks, where Patty Herrera of National Marine Fisheries is already waiting. She suspects Helote has been hit by a boat propeller. After clipping some line off a flipper, Herrera takes him to a nearby veterinarian for further treatment. Only a day later, Nichols and Guarino find little Zoe, an endangered green sea turtle who has a hook in her mouth. Guarino guides her to the surface and she is brought on board. It looks as though the team can get the hook out. After some careful clipping, Nichols pulls the hook from her mouth. Yes, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. Right. yes. Unlike so many others, Zoe's injuries are caught in time. Right. She's healthy and can be released immediately. All right. Everybody say goodbye to Zoe. Hey, hey. Whenever possible, we like to release the turtles right then and there. It's a very traumatic experience uh, in the first place, just being brought up to the surface and being dealt with directly by people. Within a month of starting their mission, Ken Nichols and his band of rescuers have found five severely injured green sea turtles. Within two months, they have found and saved eight turtles. After 31 days of recovery, the badly injured Kainoa is ready for release. His left fin had to be amputated, but he's healthy. Joe, who risked his life to save Kainoa, is especially thrilled. Kainoa is tagged and released in the same waters of his rescue. Nichols is excited, but also apprehensive. These waters are Kainoa's home, but there are no assurances that he won't encounter the same hazardous debris again. Sadly, the disfigured Kainoa has become the poster child for marine animals suffering from the effects of ocean pollution all over the world. There's no question in my mind whatsoever that we've only scratched the surface. There's marine life out there that is definitely uh, dying or in the process of dying from marine debris. And if a group of uh, five or six staff members of, of one company can affect what we've done, I can't imagine, I can't even think what could be done if more people got involved and how many more marine animals we'd be finding uh, with these kinds of problems. Ken and his devoted crew hope to continue their fight to save the turtles of their region. They also want to educate the next generation on the destructive habit of polluting the ocean with fishing debris. The sea turtles are amazingly majestic and, and beautiful creatures. I consider it an honor to be able to interact with them. And because these turtles are a threatened species, it seems even more important for us to work hard to make sure that they are indeed protected.